Senior Colonel Joe Bo, welcome to the program. Leading up uh, to the NATO summit, earlier you heard uh, our two other panelists talking about that things are very fluid and hard to predict. What do you see uh, could be uh, the result uh, of the upcoming NATO summit? For me, as a Chinese, uh, my focus uh, is more on something unprecedented, that is uh, uh, the attendance of four heads of state from uh, uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Japan, and Korea. This is something new. And uh, the Chinese, I have to consider um, to invite these countries, which are officially described as partners across the globe. So what do you think it meant? Well, I think uh, NATO led by the United States uh, uh, right now is paying more and more attention to uh, Asia Pacific or what the United States called Indo-Pacific. Because it's uh, almost ironic for me to observe how this uh, relationship has evolved a bit. Because in the past, I mean, before 2009, China and NATO didn't have uh, much interaction. It is from then on, uh, we too have a kind of a working relationship. And this is seen in some uh, what regularized exchange of visits in 2019. NATO would describe uh, China as both uh, opportunity and challenges. But in two years' time, that means last year, uh, NATO would describe China as a systemic challenge. So I just wonder what has happened. Certainly not nothing much from the Chinese side. I think the fundamental reason is China's relationship with the United States has changed because the United States, ever since Donald Trump, has described China as a strategic company. Mm. Senior Colonel Joe Bo, uh it's no secret that inside the Beltway, the consensus has been really strong. That is about uh, uh, what some describe as competition and even rivalry against the China. And yet, uh, within NATO, for example, at this moment, the issue is mainly about Russia-Ukraine conflict. But many wonder, you know, uh, how much will Washington's shaping of uh, uh, China's relationship with Russia and also uh, the uh, intense uh, indication that the U.S. is trying to make to its partners within NATO about uh, their future competition and rivalry against China would mean to the other members of NATO? Well, that's a very good question because certainly it's America's intention to have uh, these NATO countries be more and more involved in Asia Pacific. But I doubt how successful this kind of a strategy will actually work. The reasons are twofold. Number one, the so-called curse of geography, yeah, for the tyranny of geography. That means uh, Europe, Europe uh, is far away from uh, China. So for these countries to be so heavily involved, uh, especially militarily uh, in this region, it's not a, a very much a practical idea. Mm. The second thing is, you know, most uh, uh, European countries are NATO members. And if you just uh, take off the NATO tag, you would find these countries, European countries, basically are friendly countries with China, and we have a very strong economic ties in particular. So for these countries to be united uh, with uh, the United States, uh, as a one man against China, I don't believe it is quite possible. In fact, they are struggling to find the right term to describe China this year because they have to describe China as a systematic challenge. So we will see how in its strategic concept that China would be called. Senior Colonel Joe Bo, I understand NATO summit every time when it convenes, uh, it's very important to watch the geopolitical circumstances. Now, when things are evolving so fast and countries are having very different calculations about their immediate goals and their long-term visions, how do you see this year's NATO summit is likely to bring any result? Well, I think the focus, of course, is on the Ukrainian crisis. But right now, 
I think the atmosphere has changed a bit because, of course, the Ukrainians vows they will continue to fight. But the challenge for NATO is how they could assist uh, Ukraine continuously uh, and increasingly with uh, heavy and offensive weapons while not provoking Russia to use probably a uh, tactical nuclear weapon. So that is a challenge. And, uh, th and this uh, actually invites me to think about one issue. That is, uh, if we compare uh, the military strength of China and Russia, China, uh, uh, Russia is not necessarily more capable than China. China even has more naval vessels than the US Navy. And uh, we are developing very fast. And we already have three aircraft carriers, while Russia only uh, have one, which is on the constant, you know, a repair. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, why would uh, President Biden say uh, he, he won't send troops to fight uh, uh, on the soil of Ukraine, but he would uh, just say we would defend Taiwan? This is a big issue for us. Yeah. Senior Colonel Zhou Bo, as always, thank you so much for your analysis and insights.